Hey guys, welcome back. Today I'm gonna to be talking about your ECM, your engine control module, how to diagnose it and how to repair it for a low cost. You will need these capacitors here. Different ECMs are gonna have different capacitors and I'm gonna show you how to diagnose and how to replace the capacitors and which ones you would actually need to repair your ECM on your car or truck. Generally your ECM will have two, maybe three of these capacitors and if these go bad, they will throw off your calibration on your ECM. The truck in this video here is a 1990 Ford Bronco and this repair is going to be pretty much similar to any 1980s to 1990s Ford car or truck as they're pretty much the same ECM. And I'll be showing you some common symptoms on what a bad ECM looks like. So let's get started. So let me just tell you some of the issues I was having with this truck just in case you have something similar. Now this particular truck runs fine, passes smog. But the idle's a little bit high, jumps a little bit, it's kind of a little erratic, you know, it goes between 8 to 900 RPM. And I've already changed the TPS sensor and the IAC sensor. I've set the idle, under closed conditions you want it at about 0.9 volts, fully open you want it at 4.8. And also, since I'm having another minor multiple issue, my 1-2 shifts are a little firm, I wouldn't say they're hard, they're just a little firm and it takes a little bit more effort to kick down from fourth gear at highway speeds. I would have to pretty much almost floor the pedal for the truck to actually kick down from fourth to third. And that really has something to do with the throttle position. That made me wonder, I need to dig into the ECM. So let's actually just hop right into it. Now the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is disconnect your battery. Remove the negative, and then remove the positive. Place the cables off to the side. Now I'll show you where the ECM is located on this truck. To remove the ECM, you need to remove the ECM connector first. It's located over here by the driver's side fender. You can see it there, I have the light shining on it. So I'll show how to remove that connector and then we'll remove the ECM. Now you can easily remove this with a ratchet, but I'm using a wrench here to demonstrate how this connector comes off. It's usually just a small bolt. In this case, it's a 10 millimeter bolt. Just keep turning it, loosening it and the connector will actually just pop off. All right guys, so the ECM is actually located on the inside here, underneath the driver kick panel. So in order to remove it, we're gonna have to remove that kick panel, and before that, we're gonna remove this door sill right here. You're gonna have to remove this plastic rivet right here. So just kind of grab it and pull it out. Next, you're gonna to wanna to pull up carefully on this kick panel and push out. You'll see there's a couple of pop rivets in here on the inside. And here you can see those rivets there on the kick panel. So be careful when you pop them out. And lastly, slide it out from the rest of the trim. So you can see here, this is where the ECM is located. This bolt and this bracket is all that holds the ECM into place. So let's remove that bolt. And here's the bracket. Now pull the ECM out and towards you. It's kind of a snug fit, but it'll come out. And now for the fun stuff. To open this thing up, we've got to remove these screws here and here, and then we can open up this bad boy and see what's going on. All right, now what do we have here? Let's take a look. All right, now these three capacitors here are usually the suspects. And you can see there, this one's already starting to leak. I could already see that black residue down there at the bottom. So I can tell that one there is bad just by a visual inspection. Again, I see a leak down here. Now the third one, I don't actually see any leaks on this one, but I'm gonna replace it anyway since I'm already in here. And again, these are designed to only last about 15 years and they're well over their design capacity. So let's replace those and I'll show you how we do that. Pop off the back plate. Now I'm going to get started on this capacitor here first. And I want you to actually pay close attention to the orientation that this capacitor is in or any capacitor that you're going to be changing. Usually this black strip here signifies that that is on the negative side. 
So when you reinstall the new capacitor, you make sure that the new capacitor lines up and that the negative goes to this terminal. What I suggest you do is snap a quick picture of each capacitor that you start working on. And that way you have it as a record just in case. Now this first capacitor seems pretty weak and I just touched it here and that leg already broke right off. So I'm just gonna heat up the secondary leg and just pull it out. You can see here she's pretty juicy. I like to clean up these solder joints just a little bit. I apply a little bit of flux here. And I just get like an old copper cable that I have lying around. The copper will absorb all the old solder. Cleans them up pretty nice. This first capacitor here was a 16 volt 47 UF. Keep in mind you want to replace it with the correct capacitor. So anytime you pull off a capacitor, read the label here and match it up. Also, these automobile capacitors are usually 105 degrees Celsius. That's their max temperature right there. So make sure you match it up and then install your new capacitor. Here's my new capacitor here. The specs match. And always make sure you get a good quality capacitor. This one here is a Panasonic, so I know it's a good capacitor and it's a fresh one too. Don't get an old one. They do actually leak even if they're brand new, but if they're an old stock, they will actually wear out a lot faster. So make sure you get a fresh set of capacitors to be installed. And there's the first one. Just to save some time, I'm actually just gonna cut this one off. And again, I'm gonna cut this one off as well. This one here is a 63 volt 10 UF. Again, it's 105 degrees Celsius as well. Now the back has this like rubberized waterproofing. So you're just gonna have to burn through it a little bit. I use fresh solder to get to the old joints. Once it sticks, then you can remove the old tabs. All right guys, this board is done. You can see here I replaced that resistor, this one, and that one. Now your board might only have two resistors. Some of them have two, some of them have three. They might be a little different, so make sure you get the correct capacitors for your make and model. Now let's put this thing back together. All right, now carefully slide in your ECM. Install your clip. Install your kick panel. And don't forget the plastic rivet. Install your door sill. And now tighten down your ECM connector. And lastly, reconnect your battery. Put your positive on first. All right, so let's fire this puppy up. All right guys, she idles pretty smoothly. I'm very impressed with that. Just change out a couple of those capacitors. It's a lot better than spending $200 on a new ECM that somebody else just refurbished when you guys can just do it by yourself. If this video helped you guys, give me a like, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.